I would like to give you a personal tour of Snake Tower. On the left, we have my five stack of Vision 221 cages that I've had since October of 2008. On the left here, we'll start off here, start at the beginning and we'll stop when we get to the end. We have a couple snake hooks. We have this snake hook, which is made out of an old golf club that I picked up at my local herpetological society for $7. And uh, we have a collapsible snake hook, which is from Midwest Tongs. This is really nice because it's nice neoprene and uh, it's small and uh, that's very nice. We have some feeding tongs. And why do I have snake hooks? Well, all my snakes are pretty friendly, but an occasional snake gets grumpy. And I don't use snake hooks for very, very large snakes, but just to move their heads out of the way, it's, it's a good tool. And uh, these feeding tongs are to feed the mice on them. This way, they don't associate your uh, your hand with food, and it seems to work. And uh, the feeding tongs are nice because the snakes are, uh, eventually get trained to uh, to take food off the tongs. And uh, there's some sort of a classical conditioning going on because when you just put the tongs in the cage with them they'll open up their mouths. So say if they have something uh, lodged in their mouth, you just put the tongs in, or use these, uh, these baby pair of hemostats, you just put the hemostats in, and of course they'll open up their mouths to investigate, see if you have any uh, tasty treats on there, and you can just pick out the uh, obstructions on their mouths. So it's, it's a very nice uh, classical conditioning tool. Can't really operate condition snakes, but you can classical condition them. Here's uh, one of the several heat probes I have and some cage cards. On the top here, baby boas. On the left, I have pizza and I have this uh, black PVC divider I put in the cage. On the right, I have noodles. You can't really see pizza, but he's way in the back. It's his new hiding spot. And uh, here's my four corn snakes. Now, Fluffy doesn't have the aspen budding in there because he had a some fungus on a scale, and I'm not sure how we got that, because the, uh, the cages are very well ventilated, and there's not that much humidity in them, or I should say there's not an excessive amount of humidity in them, but somehow we got scale fungus, so I've been treating that with the chlorhexidine, which uh, you have to soak them in a bath, and um, twice a week until it's all gone. And it'll take a couple of months. Um, I'm not sure how we got it, but one of the treatment is you have to keep them on paper and uh, remove the bedding just in case it was something, you know, was lurking in the bedding since it's like, you know, bedding's very porous and that just eliminates a lot of it. I'm not sure how we got it. The ventilation in the cage is very good. There's not an excessive amount of humidity in there uh, it's within the uh, parameters for corn snakes. But he got it. Uh, he's on the mend, though. He's uh, like 90% better of what he was and after just a month of treatment. So then we have tangerine. And over here is my uh, bibliophile cage. And this is a used cage, but it's new to me. And let me tell you something. Bibliophile is like the best cage on the market for uh, big snakes. And when I say that, it's because uh, they have these little handle cam locks. And... The uh, door comes open easily. There's no big vents in the back like in the vision cages, uh, so it holds humidity very well. The only vent in the cage is this uh, eighth of an inch gap right here that goes along the bottom of the cage and along up the sides. Yes, these cages are waterproof well, up until this vent, so they can hold that much water. So it's great if your boa gives birth or spills its water dish or something. Underneath here, this one thing was a uh, wooden display case, or not even a case. It was just a display pedestal I picked up at the fancy Home Depot store. Not the traditional one, but there's this, uh, out in California, there's a fancy one. But the fancy one went out of business. And so I was able to get that for five bucks. And this was going to be Pepper's new cage. 
And I was going to divide it where it had her cage on top and then uh, storage on the bottom. But then I picked this up for a steal, 75 bucks. So this is her cage now. And the people I got it from, uh, actually all the people I got the cages from are kind of unscrupulous. Nevertheless, I get the cages for a good deal. Their dog had chewed up all the wires in the cage and some of the cage itself. There's a, just a couple of spots where it's a small, small indent for my teeth marks from their dog. But I had to re-spice some wiring and the dog chewed up the heat tape for this cage but luckily I had a heat tape for it. And I need to get a new light for here else I'd have the light going. The light's a 16 inch T4 bulb that's a uh, 20 watt, but I can't find a 20 watt 16 inch T4 bulb. I can only find the 8 watt version. I don't know if that's going to be bright enough or not. On top of the bow file here, we have a cooler, and this cooler does not weigh much at all, so it's very lightweight. It's a new cooler from Coleman. We have a light uh, that control that's hooked up to a cheap little thermostat. It keeps the eggs between 80 and 82 degrees. Uh, and here's a 21 corn snake eggs from Tangerine and Fluffy. Now, you might notice that there are uh, these things on the cages. Well, these are where locks used to be, the uh, jewel case locks. And uh, the people I bought these cages from in Riverside, California, drove all the way to Riverside to pick these up because these cages are that good of a deal. Um, they are just sitting in their house. And they didn't use them because they had these locks. These are where the locks once were. And they didn't have the keys for the locks. And I said, well, how are you going? Well, because I asked for the keys, the locks on the cage. And they said they didn't have them. And I said, well, how did you use the cages? They said, well, they just sat in storage. I said, okay. The cages were outrageously filthy. But uh, I took them to a uh, local car wash, a cheap ghetto car wash that nobody cared about. It had a vacuum. And I popped the glass out and slid the locks off and vacuumed out all the crap before I drove home. Because uh, that was a big snow globe in the car of crap. Now, I get all my cages used, well, have been so far. And they've all come to me very dirty. So, how do I disinfect the cages? Well, I have three main chemicals that I like to use. These are all very concentrated forms of the chemicals. Uh, you have to dilute them down. Uh, my primary chemical I love to use is a uh, Steris NPD and it just kills about everything known to mankind viruses, fungals, uh, germs, bacteria, whatever and uh, you have to dilute it about half an ounce per gallon sometimes I go strong and do an ounce uh, per gallon depending on how dirty the cage is and how much virus is but I uh, Mix up the MPD and then I just let the cage soak in it for like an, a couple hours. Uh, and then after I wash off the MPD, I clean it out with a simple green. And sometimes I clean it out with the chlorhexidine, but I normally use the uh, the chlorhexidine for other purposes. For uh, you know, if something needs to be sterile, sterilized, and I don't want to use any harsh chemicals, I'll use this because it's pretty safe for human. Uh, for humans to come in contact and animals to come in contact with. They use it to wash out wounds with uh, and it's very great. It's an antiseptic, antifungal, anti-germicidal and it works wonders on fungus. And a lot of dog ear cleaners are actually composed of chlorhexidine. It's the same stuff as uh, Fort Dodge Nova Slan, but Nova Slan is like 70 bucks per gallon and this is uh, $19 per gallon at a uh, local feed store. Yes, yeah, so there are just a couple of feed stores left in California. But this was cheap enough there, so I picked up a jug for 19 bucks, and that, like tax, it came out to like just under 20. It was like 18.98, so it came out to just under 20 bucks a gallon, which is uh, pretty cheap. So I'm happy about that. So here's the final look of Snake Tower. I should say it's going to be two towers, but 